Hello everyone, my name is Cam and welcome to another eFootball video on the channel. It's going to take a while to get adjusted to that name, but welcome to another video regardless. And today is all about the aftermath of eFootball two days later. So I have had the time to look at eFootball and what it has to offer. And we are going to look at the negatives and the positives of Konami's new route. Now, obviously, this is going to be an opinionated video. So what I see and feel might not be the same for you. So let's start with the positives. Now, the route Konami that are going down, I do understand what they are trying to do. They are adapting to a current model that is highly successful which is free to play. Becoming free to play means more people can try the game and it becomes a much cheaper option to those who cannot afford to pay for games on an annual basis. The game is designed to be updatable at any time, which gives the developers more time on concentrating on one game instead of working on more than one. So, for example, if we have an issue with referees or cursor switching, there is a possibility it could be fixed sooner instead of waiting for the fix in the next game. Well, that is the hope anyway. But with there being only one game, hopefully there is a big emphasis on content that is fair for people on their desired way to access this content. Now, like I said in my last video, Master League would return and it has been confirmed today that it will indeed be making its way into the new direction of eFootball, but it will be a paid DLC mode. Now, bringing Master League back into the fold is always positive for me as I love the game mode, as does a lot of offline players, but putting it behind a paywall is unfair, and I will touch on that more when I get into the negative side of things. The crossplay edition is a good move, as matchmaking times can be frustrating, especially on PC, which will increase the online play on the PC. Trust me, playing PES 2021 on PC was hardly an experience as I just couldn't really find anyone to play on a frequent basis. Konami are going down the right road so they can fulfill their objectives, but at the same time, this decision does not cater to players like myself. The name change was for the best in my opinion because if this was announced under the PES name, then the name Pro Evolution Soccer would definitely be tarnished. But going forward, I do embrace change and I am looking forward to seeing what this game can really offer because as always, I'd like to keep an open mind as best as I can. So now let's move on to the negatives. Now, I do consider myself a positive person and it's evident that I have a passion for the franchise, whatever name it is called now. But yesterday's announcement was hard to take in for several reasons. I'm going to read out a notable paragraph from last year's teaser trailer description and it says, This title is being developed with an updated engine that will enable us to dazzle you with staggering improvements to all areas of the game, expect more realistic player models, animations, enhanced physics and photo realistic visuals. What was shown was not any of that at all. From past articles that I have posted on this channel, it was said that this game was going to be rebuilt from the ground up for next gen consoles. But that just isn't true because all versions of the game are going to be the same, but depending on what platform you are playing on, there is going to be an upscaled and downscaled versions. So if you've paid a lot of money to secure that next gen PES with amazing graphics and photo realism fidelity, well, you are not in luck at all with the current representation of the game from the trailer. So how can this be a true next gen title with mobile integration? September 2019 was the last time we had a game which was deemed a new version of PES. PES 2021 was 2020 with an updated feel of the newest season. 18 months we have been playing the same game, but we all knew that PES 2021's season update was here so that the development team could have extra time working on this year's game. But a year from making that decision, it feels unfulfilled, and the season update format hasn't succeeded in making this year's game look as it was promised to look like. 
What I will say is that PES 2021, despite being PES 2020, has a good offline experience on PC, so there is a massive positive from that. I must admit as well that the modding community for PES 2021, it's probably the best it's ever been. You can get mods for any kind of detail in the game. Now earlier I said I would touch on why putting one of the most loved game modes behind a paywall is unfair. The game mode in question is obviously Master League. Konami know how much the offline community loves Master League, so will they use that to make people overpay for the game mode? Who knows? But what I will say is that I feel that they need to implement a trial before you buy. Now EA have an app called EA Play which is subscription based where you can play 10 hours of any new game and once that trial has ended you need to pay for the full game to continue to play. This would be good for us online fans because we need to know what we are purchasing after multiple years of disappointment in Master League. It's also important to remember that if Become a Legend is a part of the online mode DLC we need to know how that mode is before purchasing it outright. Because let's face it, that mode is very stale and it has been a filler game mode for years. And what I mean by filler is that the game mode is always going to be there, but it's just never going to be updated. It's just there to add something different offline, but it doesn't really add anything because there is no depth and it doesn't really get updated year on year. But fun fact, I have tweeted this tweet to Adam Batty. If you could give this a like or even tag Konami in this, it will be good to see this tweet get some traction as I feel this could be good for offline users going forward as I do feel at the moment it is unfair. The link is in the description below to that tweet. Now from the trailer itself, I feel the quality control was not great despite the game releasing on all major platforms. It has that mobile look and feel and from the color scheme and the graphics and the presentation, it really does cater to a different audience. The trailer itself did not have that X factor or anything to make it feel premium. In fact, despite my expectations already being low, I didn't expect to feel disappointed from watching the trailer. But in conclusion, I do hope that Konami can prove me wrong because I 100% have a passion for the franchise and I always want the game to do well. In my honest opinion, this format will be highly successful even if the gameplay isn't great. Because when you mix football with a free-to-play model, it's going to bring in the money for Konami. I just hope that with this new direction that the offline modes do get the updates that were initially promised to us and that the online communities can also have what they deserve, but only time will tell. Again, thank you to everyone who has watched today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. And if you are interested in the latest news rumors and speculation of Pro Evolution Soccer or now eFootball, sorry, consider subscribing to the channel for your news in an informative way. Also, I do have a Discord. The link is in the description below if you want to join. Like I said, link is in the description. And as usual, my name is Cam. Take care and I will see you all in the next one.